Welcome to Got Me Live, where our entry mu- our entry music won't play for some unexplained reason. So, <laughs> live from North Carolina, and or actually no, live from where the hell am I? I am in Tacoma, Washington, <laughs> until Christmas. So, live from Tacoma, Washington, the TARDIS in Florida, and the Bunny Pen in Ottawa, Canada, because Hamish couldn't make it to be with us tonight. It's Got Me Live. Welcome to the show, and I'll have to tack on our entry our our intro music later it decided to uh it decided to conk out on me i don't know what the hell's going on tonight we're going to be talking to ash fishbein who is uh one of the owners with his cousin matt of sap house meadery which has been out there making fantastic international award-winning mead since 2011 so ash is kind of ash is a mead nerd so we're going to have fun talking with him. He he has deep mead knowledge, so we're going to attempt to draw him out and get him talking and uh, see where it goes. So if you're tuning in tonight, uh, this could be a really fun and probably highly technical discussion of mead tonight. So put your recorders on and, uh, you know, let's uh, let's see what happens. Right. Speaking of which, I turned my recorder on. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it says in big red letters on there, turn on the recorder. I even made the multicolored letters. Now. I saw it that. Yeah, it looks really cool. It's very special. <laughs> kind of looks like kind of looks like fairy bed, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Let's, not get our, let's not get started. Hamish will come and hit us. <laughs> Hamish will come and hit us. Yeah, and spiders that carry mice up and down refrigerator doors. That was just weird. That was cool. That was very cool, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm actually not drinking mead tonight. I have rum and peach tonic water because that's what I had handy. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to hit a couple of the local meaderies and pick up some stash. So, um, Well, you've had your hands You've had your hands full. Yeah, yeah. Becoming a grandparent takes a lot out of a person. <laughs> oh, my poor daughter. She's just like dragging her butt around. She's so, they're both of them so exhausted. I told them, I said, as soon as you get that baby stable to where he's, you know, drinking regular and we know he's going to do it and, you know, there's enough, you know, milk that she's pumped, then, uh, then I told them, you know, then you can take and hand me the baby and go to bed. And I'll stay up with them and feed them every two hours all night long. And they're like, yes, that would be so great. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, they're very into that idea. And I can't say as I blame them because they've been for a week now, every two hours, around the clock. Little babies need that kind of attention, though. The bigger yeah. ones sometimes can get away without it from what I hear. But Well, yeah, it, it depends on the baby. I mean, he is, yeah. you know, he's he's a preemie, so... That makes him a little bit, uh, a little bit more high maintenance, at least for the next few mm. weeks, until he gets kind of back to the normal levels where he would have been if he'd been bored a month from now, like he was supposed to. So, right. Anyway. That's what my wife says about me. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry, I got off on a sidetrack there. Um, okay, so listen to us live on the Got Mead website at www.gotmead.com, or if you're mobile, you can uh, hear us recorded on iTunes, SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio. And also, um, you can check out our show player on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gotmead. And you can listen to both our live shows and our recorded shows there as well. And take us with you everywhere you go. I am working on developing a Got Me Live app. And when I get that done, I'll let you folks know about that. So replays will be available on all of those places on Got Me Live, Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. Just search Got Me Live. On Facebook, you can find us at uh, facebook.com slash gotmead. And we also have the gotmead group, which uh, is available for anybody who wishes to join. And we have a gotmead patrons group, which is closed to... uh, except only got me patrons so if you're a got me patron and want to come hang out uh just let me know and tell me your username so i can look you up and verify that you're a patron so that i can let you in on twitter you can get us at got me now if you can't call us go ahead and tweet us uh making me back to basics if you go to got and put your mouse over got me live there's a drop down there where you can get to the back to basics question page where you can send us questions and then of course if you want to call us call 803-443-MEAD that's 803-443-6323 if you want to call in during the show 
all of this stuff costs money. Uh, we all work for free because we're, we're funny like that. But uh, hmm. all the equipment, software, and maintenance, and, and monthly fees, yada, yada, it adds up. So if you listen to the show, if you use Got Mead, if you found it useful, please consider becoming a supporting patron member. It's only $30 a year, and you get access to all of our patron-only Information. So there's patron only forum boards. There's a patron only Got Me uh, Facebook group that you can use where the more experienced, a lot of the more experienced mead makers hang out there. And you're also going to find award winning recipes that you can go ahead and use for your personal mead making. So it's uh, it's pretty handy. And for 30 bucks a year, you can't beat it. It sure is cheaper than Starbucks. So uh, give it a consideration. And, uh, you know, let's. Let's help Got Me grow, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Cheaper than public radio. It is cheaper than public radio. That's right. Yeah, and I'm not going to give you like a stupid, uh, stupid T-shirt that'll fall apart the first time you watch it. Um, no, mine is mine is <laughs> holding up really well, actually. <laughs> yeah, I got mine, and it was actually too small, which is like okay. <laughs> so I was kind of upset about that. So I got I got to see what I can do. It's I mean I made the thing, but you know it's like well crap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. So, well, what, what is eight drinking? Oh, I uh, I've got my bottle of uh, Joe's Ancient Orange. That it's a Chateau Chauvet production. Um, started in 2011, bottled in 2012. That um, made with uh, Creerer's uh, Apiaries Golden Honey, and it's really really nice. I think if I go commercial, I may have to talk to Joe about just giving him some money for the recipe. Yeah. What's the the uh, what's the uh, the golden honey? Is it Creer? Is that how you say it? Creerars, yeah. Creerars, um, okay. It's their their um it's their fall harvest, so okay. it's a lot of goldenrod and and semester and whatever else is blooming in the in the uh, later in the season as opposed to their lighter stuff, which is mostly clover, which is early in the season. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm. And they also have buckwheat, but uh, it's about as close to a varietals as I get without paying a lot of money for them. Right. Um, I'm just waiting for uh, for my credit to build up at uh, at uh, B folks, <laughs> <I could>, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and then I got to figure out how to get up there and get it because it's like, well, okay, I get I get the credited mead, but then I have to like get it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, usually I manage something. All right, um, let me go ahead and uh, call Ash, and we'll get him in here. So far, all of this. Uh, Temporary portable equipment seems to be working good crossed fingers. And touch, You said it. Touch wood, you know. You just said it. I you, did you just say it. it, yeah. You cursed it. I know. It's all your fault. <laughs> it is all my fault. Hang on. But it like just asked me what boat. country I'm in, and it's like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when That's I was a TV producer, that was the worst thing you could do. Just say, hey, we're going to be done quick. Yeah. Oh God, it never or, works. Hey, look, out that everything way. looks like it's working. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, we have to just you know shut off our mics and do the uh, fix the computer dance. So. <laughs> okay, we're gonna add him in here and hope like hell this works. I actually, figured out a way to get the rigging to not happen. Nice. Yeah. And when Vicky says the fix the computer dance, it's uh, me shouting at a string of expletives. So this is why we mute the mics when we play that game. Yeah, all starting, all starting with F's. So, <laughs> Ash, did we get you? Hello. Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. This is this is all like wow. a, I'm crossing fingers, eyes, toes, and everything because I'm working on a uh, tiny little uh, tablet computer that I've got everything running on for this show. <laughs> it's like wow. please, got please don't mobile. crash. Yeah, I got me mobile. It's like please don't crash. Please don't crash. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so far so good. Cross fingers, toes, and eyes. But welcome to Got Me Live, Ash. It's it's good to have you on. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. Well, you, you, uh, you. Everybody's been telling me this, like, you need to get Ash on the show. You need to get Ash to do a talk. You need to get. You're, you're like apparently the number one mead nerd these get these days. <laughs> I don't know how I've become that. There's a lot of great mead makers out there, but I'm happy to be here, and I'm I, I look forward to any questions that there may be and whatever insight I can pro- uh, provide. 
Okay, cool. Well, um, what we're going to do is we'll first we'll you know kind of dig into a little bit about what you're up to and what's going on with the meadery, et cetera. But uh, then usually a second half of the show is our back to basics show, and. Uh, right. We often have a theme, like last uh, the last eight show segment we were doing uh, styles, but because because you're kind of a mead nerd and you're into you know like deep fermentation science and stuff like that, we figured we'd just kind of see where it took us, and you know. <laughs> great, great. So you know it should be good. So tell us a little bit about about you and Sap House and how you guys got started. I mean, I've got your story, but of course nobody's seen it but us. So. <laughs> sure, sure. So uh, we started uh, Sap House in 2009, but my history with me goes back uh, into the 90s. I I actually started with beer in uh, 10th grade. I wasn't old enough to buy it, so I learned how to make it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I became a pretty pretty solid fan with friends, and uh, and it really started there. I didn't know what I was really doing. Went to the uh, local homebrew shop, and uh, you know they had books of uh, of clones and and different things that uh, different recipes you could make. And I remember one of my first batches was a uh, Sammy Smith Oatmeal Stout, and I really just loved what what it was all about. And uh, after that, it was eleventh grade English lit class. And Red Beowulf, as many um, mead in, uh, in enthusiasts have have read and, and know, you know, has been mentioned in. And uh, I remember 11th grade, I was just like blown away that you could make alcohol from honey, um, and it really just kind of kicked it off. I was a home brewer from you know 1998 to uh, 2009 when Matt and I both decided to open up Sap House Meadery. Um, him and I are cousins. Um, and we uh, live in a in a town, or we're from a town that's you know really was a hustling and bustling town back in the early 1900s. And the uh, over the years, um, it started to kind of get a little bit depressed. We had a, a train that used to come every single day, and <clears throat> from Boston, that stopped coming. Our little town got bypassed uh, uh, twice. Uh, to a major highway, so oh. a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the center of town just kind of w- went dormant, um, and a lot of business and industry left. So, all of my life, it's it's kind of always been like that. And you know, there's a lot of people in the area that have tried and are trying to recreate or revitalize uh, our our town. And Matt and I wanted to join in on that. So, we actually ended up purchasing a building that came up for sale uh, fall of 2009. Uh, hmm. Cut it on a very short sale. We uh, both Matt and I were working full time jobs. I, I'm a chef uh, by trade, and um, you know we said, you know, let's try this. Let's buy this thing. Let's do it. And it was Christmas Day when we decided to do that. And uh, by January 21st of 2010, we closed on the building. Uh, by August um, 26, 2010, we had it pretty much renovated and. Uh, we were licensed, so our first batch was made August 26, 2010. Um, our process is really simple, but it requires us to uh, ferment and age for a minimum of six months. So most of our meats are much older than that, huh. and so we didn't open we didn't open until February 2011. Um, so it's quite the process to go from start you know uh, the conception of the idea to actually opening the door. Um, we did it on a shoestring. We we really um, grassroots effort uh, this thing, and you know we've been able to grow it tremendously uh, over the last yeah. uh, several years. And it's 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 been a grind. It's uh, it's been a heck of a ride. And you know, both Matt and I built this business <clears throat> on not only the the idea to revitalize our town because we both agreed early on that the idea of what we do has to be bigger than ourselves and the idea that we're what we're doing is actually bigger than a meter you know we're trying to change a community trying to change the the mental shift uh, of people in our area in our community so you have to think we, we had to think bigger than what we were really trying to do um you know it's kind of like aim for the 20 and hit the bullseye kind of approach to dark so yeah um that was kind of our method, you know, and it's been just unbelievable. Um, we built our company on 